Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. I hope that everybody watching had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving here in the United States. And if you're from other countries, I hope that your week has been wonderful and you're having a great Friday. I am here. I am down in F Florida, so hence why my scenery is a little bit different right now. And I'm here with the beautiful Stephanie, who's up in Connecticut. And even though I'm down in Florida, where it's really a lot warmer where Stephanie is up in Connecticut right now. I'm still freezing right now because us people from the deep South, we just can't handle the cold. So how are you doing, Stephanie? How's everything up in Connecticut? How was your Thanksgiving? Great. Well, it's freezing here. <laughs> it's in the thirties right now. Ooh. And I'm from, I'm from new England and that's too cold for me. So I lived in Florida for a while when I was a little, little kid. And Man, I don't I think I ever, on. I got shorts on. I'm just, <laughs> just I have sweatpants and my hoodie on and slipper socks and my slippers and well, still cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, actually I had, when I was a little kid, I had this like fantasy of living somewhere that where it snowed in the winter. Cause I just thought that was so cool that there were people that like lived places where it snowed. And I just had this like romantic idea of like putting my backpack on and like walking through the snow to get to school. Um, because here in Georgia it, or where I live, I'm in Florida right now, but if they, uh, in Georgia, if they even like suggested that there was a possibility that it might snow, everything shuts down, everything shuts down. Cause we just can't even like handle it. And once oh, boy. I, I, I'm, I, I'm 38, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not old, but I'm not young. Um, and one time I was on the phone with my best friend in Canada and he was saying, telling me he had to get winter tires for his car. I had no idea that was a thing. I had no idea that people had to change their tires out for the winter. Uh, well, I don't, I don't do that. I downshift. I drive a standard. <laughs> I have other ways to do it. <laughs> I mean, we just can't do it. We just don't know how to handle the snow. I mean, even when it does sometimes snow in Georgia, it'll like hit the ground and fall right away. But, um, but yeah, I'm definitely a babe. But I did when I was a kid, I had a fantasy of living places where it snowed and just... no, it's overrated. Snow. <laughs> Snow sucks. Snow is wet. Snow is cold. Snow is pretty at first. And then it gets really ugly once the cars go back and forth and trash it with mud. And I do apologize. My dogs are having fun and I'm not in my studio today. So. That's okay. That's totally fine. I think everybody We're going to hear a little bark, fans. bark here and there. And it's, it's hard when we're on a big, uh, you know, for people not watching who are not from America, Thanksgiving for us is a really big holiday here in America. It's like the preamble to Christmas. And so kids are home from college, schools are out. And so it does make, sometimes makes filming a little bit harder, but just like, you know, most people know, like when your kids are home and things are going on and, you know, we're, we travel to see our family, it's, 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 it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I'm sure everybody watching totally, totally understands. Um, but today, Sophie and I are, we're going to reveal the two winners of the drawing for Stephanie's awesome Etsy shop with her jewelry. So I'll say that, the, say that at the very end of the episode of the two people who won. Um, and we will have you get in contact with Stephanie so you can select your items. We'll cover that at the end though. But for today, what I wanted to talk to Stephanie about is a, a subject that Stephanie and I both are very passionate about. Um, and that is basically A-B-U-S-E, which we are going to be using the word mistreatment for the A word because of the uh, limitations put on us by YouTube, but, but especially in places like the church and other religious organizations. Now, the reason why Stephanie and I talk so much about the church is because that's how we grew up. That's our background. That's our wheelhouse. That's what we're familiar with in a very deep level. You know, you can learn things about different religions that you didn't grow up in, but if you didn't, grow up in the religion, you don't have that really inherent knowledge of how things actually work. Would you agree with that, Stephanie? Like it's different learning about something versus growing up in it. Yeah. I often say too, it's a, it's, it's a totally separate matrix too. Oh yeah. And it's part, it's part of this. It's totally part. Now um, let's see here before we get into it. I do want to remind you guys to go over to Stephanie's channel um, she is at, oh, let's see if I, oh, 
Let's see if I can get this full up here. She is at Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening here on YouTube. Well, uh, what's it doing? I think the internet's being wonky today. It is. Let's see. I've been trying to do some research this morning and it was been a little funny. All right. So here we go. She's so close to 2000. She's like 300 away from 2000. So let's go ahead and make that happen for her. Go ahead and get her to that 2000 point mark of subscribers because, you know, it's not, a, it's not a popularity contest. We're not here to like have the biggest platform. So the reason why we want a lot of people on people's platforms is because the more numbers that Stephanie has, the more the algorithm is going to push her videos out. And her videos are super, super, super important because she's going through a lot of the deconstructioning of um, the thought traps of this um, church matrix. Because, well, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and talk about this for a second because we're going to use um, a system to talk about today. All right. So the bite model is it was created by a guy a long time ago, but it's really it's really great. Um, to help you figure out if you're in a C-U-L-T. Okay, we can't say the C word on YouTube as well. And that's, it's, it stands for behavior, behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. And again, you see this in a lot of religious institutions. If somebody really has your best interest at heart and wants you to be healthy within your own mind, they're not going to try to control your behavior. They're not going to try to control your information. They're not going to try to control your thought, nor are they going to try to control your emotion. Now, Stephanie, I know this is for the Jehovah's Witnesses right here, but this is literally for all religions. All, have an all of it. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's Christian or not. It, it's, I think it goes for any of the religions, the organized religions. Absolutely. But can you see all this stuff within the church, Stephanie, all these? I can give you know. examples of any of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, let's, let's go ahead and uh, <coughs> yeah, let's go through it. All right. Behavior so control. behavior model. I mean, they want you to be, um, you know, I guess prim proper. Um, they want you to make sure that you're not living in sin, whatever that means. <laughs> um, you know, don't, don't have sex before marriage kind of a thing. Don't don't have a baby before marriage kind of a thing. I mean, that all goes with behavior because it takes a certain behavior for any of that. We, we all know that as adults here. Um, as far as information control, you know, uh, don't question the Bible in their opinion. You know, you don't question the information that the pastor or the priest or the rabbi or the whatever leader is, is preaching. If you question it, well, then uh, you're accused that you don't have uh, faith, that you are, you know, you got to stay inside that that parameter, that box that they put God in. Um, yeah. And we know now that it's not the God we thought. Um, thought control. Well, they don't want you thinking. Again, it goes with that information. They don't want you thinking outside of those parameters. They don't want you thinking anything but that book that you hold in your hand called the Bible. <coughs> yeah. Um, and emotional control. Emotional control, I think, is one of the worst ones out of all of it because our emotions control pretty much all that's above it. And with the emotional control, um, that's more or less like uh, that whole fear foundation where are you, you know, oh, you're living in sin, you're going to go to hell. Oh, you're living in sin, so you're going to, you're not rapture ready. You're, you're going to be left behind. Um, it, it's a fear factor. And if they can control your fear, they can control all the above. Did you ever read Stephanie? Let's see. Oh, left behind. Did you ever read? I, these books? I, I, I always refused to even look into that. I refused it. Something felt off about it. And I always refused. Yeah, I never read them either. But I remember some videos came out like they, they made them into um, movies and seeing yes. like clips of the movies in um in like church as like, we were teenagers when these this came out right i want to say like the 90s yeah i know i know one of them came out when i was in my early 20s so in my church uh i think was going to be having a movie night and playing it and i i wouldn't i would not watch any of it no this is all in my opinion and this is just our opinions guys this this whole book series is propaganda um, to control you because they're scary, aren't they? Like it shows the revel the book of revelation in a very <coughs> scary way. 
um, that you're just going to have to go through hell and back and all this kind of stuff. And as Stephanie and I have talked about a lot and a lot of other people in our community have talked about as the veil is lifting, which is what apocalypse mean, apocalypse means to lift the veil. We're understanding the book of revelation a whole lot more. And it's nothing what these guys wrote in these books. There's nothing. This I guarantee. I guarantee you, you know, I'll have to do some research on that author, but I'm guarantee I guarantee you that author was uh, probably paid hefty amount of money to put this out. That might be a good deep dive to do, Stephanie, if you want to do that. Yeah, well, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on um oh, what's his name? He um something Baxter. He was uh, a pastor of this uh televangelist uh thing on TV for the end times. And what I found out about him is that he was uh, a multimillionaire, number one. So that's that's a red flag. Um, and, and supposedly last year, he left the earth plane because of an illness. Code for yeah. something. Yeah, we know what that means. Yeah. yeah so- and, and, that's, and that's the thing, because this type of sphere tactic basically will get people in the gut hook, line, and sinker. And I know you and I, and a lot of our, our friends that are watching us right now, I hate calling the people watch us like my subscribers, our subscribers, because that just is so not personal They're family, their family. I feel like that's what I was saying earlier. Like it's getting her more subs. It's not about the numbers. We're just trying to get her, her research out there. And everybody who watches is just like us. We're all in this together. We're all walking each other home. And I know a lot of people watching this right now agree with us that this is, I'm not afraid anymore. Like this doesn't scare me. None of this crap that was told to me at you church. At it now. Yeah. I, 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 um, Oh gosh, you know, um, so I don't know if I was sit- telling this to you, Stephanie, or someone else, I can't remember, but you know, I stopped going regularly to church around the age of like 17. So it's literally been probably about 21 years since yeah. I was in regular attendance at a church. And so that's given me a lot of time to for a lot of um, psychological chains that I didn't even know were there to crumble and break away. And I was at one of my friend's mother's funerals a few years ago at the church that I grew up in, that we grew up in. And um, the pastor that led the funeral was the same pastor we had as, as kids. He was no longer at the church, but they brought him back in just to do this particular funeral. And I got to giggling. I started giggling. Because it was like a damn telenovela. Like he was up there at the pulpit and he was just so like over exaggerated in his, in his preaching. And it was so fake. It was so fake. fake. His emotions were complete bullshit. Like, and I started like giggling. I was like this and I'm looking around the the church and all these people that I knew growing up who still go to this church. I'm like, are y'all buying this crap? Are y'all buying this? He doesn't mean what he's saying. He's not sincere. You know, they, they, they yeah. often say that used car salesmen are the best actors, but they're not because, you know, they're lying. Good mm-hmm. actors, you don't know they're lying. Bad actors, you know, they're lying. <clears throat> and, and it is my opinion that a lot of these people who get into these um, careers, not all of them, but a lot of them do have issues with like narcissistic personality disorder. And with that comes extreme amounts of A, B, U, S, C where they try to control their people. They want to, they get their narc supply off of you. It's a whole other topic, but um, I'm actually, I'm sure if I would love to do a deep dive into the authors of these books, this left behind series, just so we can, you know, really figure out the yeah. truth behind this propaganda. Cause it's all just propaganda, isn't it? Yeah. And hear you, you know, for my, you know, for anybody who follows my channel, um, I'm actually, uh, there's a couple of series that I'm, you know, for my channel that I'm going to probably start doing and, you know, I got a book that I, I showed you and I've actually showed a lot of people, um, especially in the groups, I've showed them um, a book that I got um, that talks about the ancient roots of Christianity and how it actually stems back to Egypt. Like we've been talking about the Mithraism and everything. Um, but I'm also I wanted to start doing deep dives on all these evangelists or televangelists um, to show that these are not people that are here for your best interest and have your best interest in mind. They are people paid to put out fear propaganda. So you believe this phony uh, left behind or going to hell or any of that kind of thing. Um, they want you in fear. They want to, they, they feed off of it and yeah. their, their, their handlers feed off of it. It's called, you know, you, you, you emit an energy called yeah. loosh. 
that de demons actually fear off. And again, it goes back to that whole like idiognosis thing, which I really feel like at the end of the day, if you want to simplify what's happening right now is we're learning the difference between edo and gnosis gnosis of yeah. inner knowledge when you have gnosis you don't need anybody else you're not vulnerable to anybody else but if you are seeking edo which is outer knowledge you're vulnerable to <clears throat> everyone and you're susceptible to everything now this is on my twitter guys and i am trying to get better at twitter <laughs> i will forget that i have twitter from time to time but i've these last few days i've gotten better at it and I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Josh, the Josh Duggar case um, from 19 Kids and Counting, the one of the, the oldest son of all 19. Their family practices like a quiverful type of um, very conservative, very fundamentalist Baptist. In my opinion, and I've said this before, extreme fundamentalism is very much satanic. It's a satanic faith. Yeah. Um, and I want to show you guys this. So Josh Duggar, this husband, the oldest son of the family of the 19 kids, they had a reality show here in America for those who are not from the United States. They're famous here in America for this reality show of them having like 19 kids and all that kind of stuff. Well, Josh is their oldest child and he married this woman named Anna. Now back in, I want to say like the late 2000s, like ish, or maybe it was, no, I'm sorry, maybe like 2015. I can't remember few years ago, he got popped for, um, for the Ashley Madison stuff, the website where you like want log on to have affairs and they're like super fundamentalist. So that's like a no, no in their C U L T. Um, and then, so he cheated on his wife, but she stuck with them. Well, last year, I believe it was last year. He was arrested by Homeland security for child P I'll let you gotcha. guys finish that nastiness, gross, horrific stuff. And they even in, in the latest case, they even like had, from what I understand, they, they, when they arrested him, they took a picture of his hands because apparently he has a scar on his hand. And they were checking to see in some of the footage he had, if the person in the footage also had that same scar, meaning that they don't just suspect that he had possession of this horrific material and illegal material, but maybe also participated in it as well. From what I understand, his children have to be forensically checked as well. I mean, it's awful. And so um, I shared this tweet from somebody else and I said, holy shit, ladies, this is what ABUSC and manipulation look like, especially in a lot of fundamentalist C-U-L-T-S. Josh Duggar stands accused of CP amongst other things. So this was written by the transformed wife. And she's awful. Like in my opinion, she's uh, her stuff. She uh, is a promoter of marital RAPE um, that the women are just, we're just nothing that ever, our whole life comes through the man, which if you guys have been following Stephanie and me for a while in our discussions into the new Testament, Jesus was a, a woman's lib. Like he was anointing women to teach. So he was not, he did not believe this crap that they're spewing. But basically, people have been trying to get Anna Duggar to le finally leave him. But of course, in these really deep fundamentalist um, groups, they take the marriage, the covenant of marriage very, very seriously, which most people should. But in a situation like this, I think most people, regardless of how religious you are, would leave your husband. Like, this is ridiculous. This guy's a psychopath, in my opinion, allegedly. Well, one thing I want to bring up, too, is the God I serve does not want a woman to be miserable in their marriage and, and deal with uh, infidelity and, and ABUSA yeah. manipulation. Absolutely. God, God wants you to thrive and be happy. Like that's not how God works. No, he's not saying, no, you got to deal with him for the rest of your life, regardless of what he does, because you're a woman. Right. Hell no. <laughs> right. And the, the gospel of the Holy 12, the gospel of the Nazarene way, <coughs> Jesus about divorce and he says, if there is no love, then divorce is necessary. So just the simplest of it, if there is no love, if that person's cheating on you and if you're miserable, yeah, but that's not so with, with Anna Duggar, from what I understand with the way they, they teach, and I didn't grow up this, this conservative, my family was freaking liberal compared to this family. Um, he cheated on her and has multiple times and they don't consider child P to be any different than like adult P. It's just all infidelity to them. They don't seem to quite understand from my, my perception of that, that there's a, it's one thing to cheat on your spouse with another adult, consenting adult. It's another thing to do what he's done. That's a sickness and that's disgusting. 
and it's demonic. Um, anyway, so, and from what I understand, the way that these girls are raised is that yes, being faithful to your husband is your covenant. However, if your husband cheats on you, it's your fault because you weren't doing enough to satisfy him basically. And if your husband cheats on you and then you decide to leave the marriage because he cheated on you, then you're the one who broke the covenant. This is called gaslighting and manipulation, my friends. 100%. And we see this a lot. So the transformed wife wrote, many told her to divorce him. He was a fool and did evil things. She told the world she forgave him as Christ had forgiven her. She showed the world the power of the gospel. So they're praising Anna for sticking with her husband who is on trial with Homeland Security for child P. This is just batshit crazy. This is batshit crazy, yeah. but, but she's the brave one because she showed the world that, that, you know, she, Christ forgave her. So she's going to forgive him and stay married to him. Hell no. You're a mom. You're a mom. Um, Stephanie, if you knew, I mean, I know your husband is not this at all, but if you, so let's just say you were married to someone else beside the husband you're married to now, because he would never do this. But let's say you were married to a man who was then arrested for this. What would you do? Oh, divorce papers. First thing, like protect. I would not, I would not be sticking with that. And I've, I've been in very toxic relationships and, you know, at first you feel stuck. And then finally you get this burst of, of strength. And I really think it's God's strength through us. Yep. And yep. you just do what you have to do. In addition to that, it's not even just about you as a wife. If you have kids involved, why would you want to subject your children to someone who's doing that to other children? That is a safety uh, yeah. uh, issue. You know, it's so funny when my <clears throat> nephew was born, um, he's nine now. So, uh, nine years ago when he was born on April or excuse me, October 27th. So he just turned nine. And I remember he was the first, he was the kid that made me an aunt. And I remember holding him in the hospital, like right after he was born. And the first thing I thought, and maybe it was just, a, a spidey sense of what was to come because this was long before the great awakening started that was the first place my mind went was like, if anybody hurts him in this way, I will literally commit on them because you, I just remember feeling that vulnerable baby's body in my hand and loving that baby so much and knowing that I would literally give my life for this mm -hmm. like little wrinkly thing. That's my nephew. And I still feel that way, even though he's nine years old, he, I, I still feel that way. And, and, and how can you not, you know, especially if you're, she's a mother of seven children now, how can you not think that? Yeah. But it's the brainwashing. It's, it's you know, these people, isolation is a huge part of uh, mind control is isolating someone. And a lot of the really extreme fundamentalist organizations will do that. They homeschool their kids. Now, nowadays we want you to homeschool your kids because of what's going on in the world. But before this, they would do it intentionally so their kids would not be exposed to other children that lived in a home that did not follow the same principles that they did. Like I said, I grew up in a Christian home, a conservative Christian home, but my, my family was liberal compared to this, this family. Yeah. So the they, same thing with mine. Yeah. And then the girls can't wear shorts. They can't wear, they have to cover their shorts. Like it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But even if you look at the extreme versions of this, mind control, you can start to see the similarities between just the basic church, can't you? I mean, they try to isolate you as well, right? They don't want you hanging out with people that aren't of your same um, belief system, right? I mean, and that contradicts what they say, oh, bring, bring people to us so that we can expand the church and, and have more people saved and have a revival and this and that. You go to bring, let's say someone is cursing in a church because they're spiritually sick, you know, and they, they have had a rough life and that's just how they talk. They're likely to get kicked out instead of being loved. Right. That's just an example. Oh, it's, there's no love in the church. Yeah, no, no, for sure. There's no, if you feel like you have to walk on eggshells around somebody or around something that I've learned that through trauma therapy, that's a sign of ABUSC. And I know yeah. when I've been in churches, I felt like I had to walk on eggshells. What about you? I always felt like I had to prove something to the pastor. I always like, and I, and honestly, and, and 
you're the first to hear this and I guess the rest of the audience. I actually put on an acting act. Like I was an actress in church. I would be the, I'm not living in sin. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm, I have a great life. I had to put on an act so that I felt accepted. But then when I left the church, I felt empty because that's not me. Right. I don't, I'm the type of person that wants to act myself. I don't want to put on an act. I get on camera for this. I'm act, this is who I am. And I guess that's why I'm comfortable with it because I, I'm, I, I know how to act. I always wanted to be an actress when I was younger, you know, and, uh, but when it comes to real life, I, I hate fakeness. I, I don't like that at all. And I don't like acting fake. And just so that I could get a place like on worship team or something like that, I would put on this facade that I had a perfect life. Yeah. And in, in yeah. churches. Well, it's to get the, the heat off of you as well. Like, don't look at me, look at someone else. Well, yeah, because I've had pastors, you know, invade my privacy, asking me these very private questions that it's like none of your business. Like, it, and I've told you stories, but it's just like for a pastor to ask you about, you know, your uh, intimate life with your partner and stuff like that, like just to make sure you're not living in sin and stuff like that which happened when I was dating my son's father at the time. And to me, that was my family at the time. Like I wasn't married to him, but I was like, we had, we, we had, we shared a child, you know? So I was trying to keep a family together and told, well, don't live with him and don't do this and don't do that. And, and yeah. So, but then on the other hand, the main pastor of the church who I, I still I still connect with him once in a while because he's not your average pastor. He's the one pastor I adore because um, he's so not judgmental. And he, I was in a bad situation um, and he actually came and rescued me out of that house when I needed him. So, but his, uh, it was the co-pastor who asked me the invasive questions. And I'm just like, I, it caused a lot of confusion. And it was like, my gut was like, what? There's something wrong with this. Yeah. But I'm going to say this right now to anybody listening that might be confused. Your private life, your intimate life, your private life is nobody else's business, not your pastor's business, not anybody else's business, but you and the person you share that with. And only you are the person that gets to talk about what you want to talk about to another person when it comes to that. So that, yeah, I get that. That's awful. And I was cornered when this happened in my own vehicle. Well, let's see. I, this, like, you, I know we've talked about this before with your story, with your, with your son, who is a blessing from God, regardless of, of, of how the circumstances were, how he came into this world on purpose. You know, yeah. let's, let's talk about this. Now, this is where we see a lot of gaslighting too. Now we know, Stephanie and I know, and most of the people watching this channel know because we were going through the missing books of the Bible and they tell a very different story about the uh, conception of Yahshua, um, that Mary and Joseph were actually married and he was conceived the natural way. We, we've gone over this on the channel before. We know that the whole virgin birth is satanic. It has to do with the Nephilim and their, their conception with the incubus. That's how Mithra horse. was conceived. Exactly. That's how Mithra, Ra, Horus were all conceived that way. So we know that those of us watching this right now, we're aware that Yahshua was born onto this earth the way we all were. Um, the way that God intended it to be, that magic of that spark when the sperm and the egg meet, right? And that Joseph and Mary were actually married because let's be real, 2000 years ago, if she wasn't married, she would not have survived that pregnancy. So let's just look at that with common sense too. However, this is the kicker. The church wants you to believe that she was a virgin birth and that she wasn't married to Joseph yet. So that means that Jesus, according to the church, that Jesus was conceived out of wedlock. But yet he is the Christ. But yet if you conceive a child out of wedlock, you're a sinner. Yes. Does that make sense? Not at all. Makes and another thing all. that goes, another thing that contradicts itself. Yeah, exactly. And the Bible and contradicts itself over and over. Like, for instance, Jesus um, had, he, he anointed in um, women to, to be leaders and such. But if you read in first Timothy and I forgot what chapter and verse it is, it said that women should be quiet in church and not talk. 
and that they cannot become uh, leaders of the church. At so, this point, the only person's word I'm taking as that <laughs> is Yahshua's. Yeah, because there yep. are some of the the more I dig into the apostles, there are some apostles I have problems with, for sure. There, I've never really Simon, liked Peter. Peter. Yeah, I've never really liked Peter. Um, and then reading more about through the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, actually, how it was Jesus left his church to his brother James, because yes, Jesus had siblings. And James was one of, there's that, not the James that has a book in the Bible. That's a different James, but he had a brother also that ran the church in Jerusalem and Jesus left it to him. But the church will tell you he left it to who? Peter. Peter. And that's Peter. where, yeah, that's where Peter's grave is, is okay, allegedly is at the Vatican. Vatican means what? Head of the serpent. St. Peter's Nephilim. Basilica. Yes, they're Nephilim-based thrones. In I've been to the Vatican. They're Nephilim, big Nephilim giant thrones in the Vatican. Something's very suspicious about that. And, and we have to understand, and I know Stephanie and I have talked about this, it's like the Bible that we have has been so altered and edited. And J King James himself, which that's another thing, a lot of these fundamentalist churches will only let people read from the King James version of the Bible because they believe this false propaganda that King James was inspired by God to write this in English. Well, first of all, he was not the first person to translate the Bible into English. The first person who translated the Bible into English got burned at the stake for it. And second of all, King James was a Satanist. Why are you reading a Satanist Bible? Why are you doing that? And the fact that the church never liked the King James Bible, I never read it. And the fact I had no interest. And the fact that they won't, they, 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 you know, if you look at Michael and Debbie Pearl's website, they tell you that um, they won't let you read anything outside of the King James Bible. Well, that's isolation and thought control, isn't it? Why? Why are you, people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. Yep. If you are secure in your faith and what you're teaching, what you believe, you should not have to worry about what other people are reading. That wouldn't bother you. If you really believe that what you believe is the truth, then you would not have to control people like that, would you? No. This has came to me too. And a lot of times you'll hear, you know, when God's judgment hits, the church will be first to receive that judgment. And we're in the book of Revelation. What does Revelation mean? Revelation of the church. Mm -hmm. The truth will come out that the church we have been uh, living under the guidelines of and the rules of and everything like that this church that we see as the church of christ is in fact the church of it's the what the book of revelation calls and uh i built the chapter five says the synagogue of satan it's in the um letter to the church of philadelphia and it's actually a letter to uh mr t by the way if you go and read it um like legitimately it's like it's talking about mr t and it's a letter from god almost and it talks about how um saying you will get attacked by those who call themselves but they are really in the synagogue of satan yeah. so this is yeah. that revelation i mean it's going to be revelation of the the children it's mm -hmm. going to be revelation of all the fake everything the fake food the fake clothing because there's chemicals in our clothing the fake everything but the biggest thing i think is going to be the revelation of the church yeah because they're the first for judgment and I think that, and we've said this before, you know, I think, I think those of us who, who are realize this, like I've said many a times, this is not, <coughs> this has only strengthened my, my walk, my spiritual mm -hmm. walk, um, basically because I'm not dependent on anybody else at all. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not, it's between me and God and nothing anybody threatens me with or says to me is going to change my relationship with God. And I feel very divinely protected by God. Um, I know we spoke about this on Tuesday with David and I haven't really gotten into too much detail on my channel about it but since kirsten w spoke about it you know i've i've received some very serious threats from bishop larry gators she um, talked about it she did a video on it because she got she did so now i feel a little bit more comfortable coming out on the public platform talking about it It was very scary um where he talked about decapitating witches and then called me a witch by name and then tried to dox me um and so but he's associated with that church mafia which is part of the machine. It's part of the matrix. And, um, and I, and I know um, a beautiful subscriber sent me a video where he said he's actually coming to Atlanta 
And so part of me thought I needed to put a protective order on myself, but I, I, I'm just going to let God deal with it because I know I'm protected. Um, because the, the church is the first to be judged. And, um, you know, and this is what's scary. And, that, and that's what, and the thing is, is like, we, a lot of us can um, accept that our government is corrupt, education, medicine, whatever. But when it gets to the foundations of religion, people start to act erratically. But the problem is that I've noticed is that so many people have been so brainwashed by this bite model, by these, by this ABUSC tactics of CULTs that um, they don't even realize that they're addicted and attached to a story that's yeah. video that's outside of them. It's not even real because it's outside of them instead of just having the inner knowing of God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the baptisms, like we and the Presbyterian church, we got baptized as babies. A lot of churches baptize as, as babies. I know Baptists baptize when they're kids, but that was because back in like the, the days of Yorn, the olden days, kids possibly didn't live that long. So they want to make sure their kid was baptized so that they would go to heaven. I'm sorry. Water on your head is not going to de determine your salvation. It's not going to determine anything. When I see baptism now, I see it as more of a symbolic ceremony. Yeah. It doesn't mean crap. That water doesn't mean crap. It's, it's just water on your head. The person putting the water on your head is not specially ordained by God to do it either. Your actions and your thoughts mean a lot more than water yeah. on your head. You, yeah. shower, you take baths and you shower. There's the water. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't shower, take a bath. Well, maybe is the time to do so. <laughs> Open it. Well, I say I tell people my mor my morning yoga practice every morning. I get up super early. We practice during Brahma Morta, which is the time of God, early in the morning, and that's my daily baptism. It's my morning prayer. It's my daily baptism. It sets me up for my day. Now, the reason why we're talking about this again, guys, is because as you guys know, Stephanie has actually been I I say divinely inspired to start reaching out to people and forming communities for support groups, for people who are just now starting to like realize, and that can be scary, can it, Stephanie, when you realize like the whole foundation of your belief system is based on a lie. That can be really terrifying. You need, well, I've, I've come across a lot of this and I'm not going to go into names or any in particular situation, but something in my groups that I've formed together, uh, put together is um, uh, something I've noticed is in talking to others, we might have certain people who are married to a fundamentalist, but they know what we know now. And so what is happening is there's definitely a divide between that, that, that foundation of their marriage now. And where, like, I know that some women are having to deal with uh, their husband, who's a fundamentalist, they won't even acknowledge them in, in the house anymore. So it's like, once you see, you can't unsee. So let's say my husband is not a fundamentalist, but let's say hypothetically he was. And I know what I know now. I wouldn't try to go back to sleep and conform to his ways because I want my husband back and I want him to acknowledge my existence. But I would try to seek uh, people that share the same views as me. So I think it's even if you're not coming into the group with uh, a past ABUSC or mistreatment, um, but let's say you just need somebody to talk to because that's the situation you're currently in. Now I'm kind of in a situation right now, even where like my, my husband, he's awake with certain things, but he's completely asleep when it comes to the spiritual war up uh, spiritual W a R we're in. And um, so that's kind of put a divide between us. I still love him. We, we acknowledge each other in the house, but um, we're not the best friends we used to be. And, I, you know, I hate to say it, but that's just the reality of it. I'm calling it for what it is. So even for me, even though I'm the one hosting the groups, it's almost healing for me too. It's healing for me to do these videos with you or whoever, because I'm talking to people who are like-minded. So it's not even just for people who have these um, past issues with ABUSC. It's just like a fellowship. And that's the only reason why I ever went to church was the fellowship. Right. I, I honestly thought church was downright boring, especially <laughs> when I was a Catholic. Stand, kneel, stand, uh, <laughs> sit down, getting my church aerobics for the Sunday. <laughs> you're, 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 full, you're full on doing that midrag ritual, aren't you, in that Catholic church? Oh, my God. And it, it got to, like, even when I have to go to a funeral or something, or I have to go in a Catholic church for some sort of reason. And there's been a couple reasons, like my grandparents' funerals. 
Luckily, my mom's cousin, who is a priest, and he's a very nice person. I don't know him one like a lot, a lot, but he did a phenomenal funeral for them. But that was his aunt and uncle. Yeah. So, I mean, luckily we had that. But honestly, the rest of it, you know, they have this incense thing. Yeah. Swinging and in they're, fl- in they're flinging water yeah. at you. And I'm just like, okay, first of all, these incense smell terrible. How about we just sage the place and then burn it down after? Like... <laughs> Like, I got an instant headache after that. And it it is just like, you know, the whole like, those hymns that they do, it's just like, oh, shoot me already. This is ridiculous. Like, you know, I I can't, I can't deal with the hymns. I can't deal with the organ music. What do you think of an organ for you? Think of it like Halloween, scary, but yet they're going to put it in a church. Are you freaking kidding me? Sorry. I'm like very passionate about this. No, go, I, go, go, sound off. Um, yeah. And then I like, I've, I've gone to other Catholic churches for certain things, whether it's like a wedding or something. And, you know, you get some of the people there that actually are members of that church and they don't say hi to you. because well, You're not part of the club. So it's like, well, okay. I feel a little awkward right now. And, um, and I'm a very social person. I'll go up to random people and say, hi, how are you today? Now, my husband's a little on the shyer side, so I normally have to do a lot of the talking, but that's okay. I'm a female and I'm also Italian, so it works out well. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, I, walking into those churches, just uh, something, something just gives me the heebie oh, It's so off. And yeah. I just, I come out of it and I see there's this energy that, I'm not right for the rest of the day. No, every time I have to go into a church now, and it literally for me, it is like funeral, <coughs> like weddings, funeral, something like major. And, um, but I always feel like I have to go like stage myself. Like I'm just covered in evil when I leave that. I just yeah. feel like evil is just everywhere. Um, because it's just the more, you know, and the more you, and it's, you're right. I, that's one of my favorite sayings. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't. Once you, you know, can, you, you can't unknow it. It's so. If you go back to sleep, you have some sort of weird gifting, like to be able yeah. to shut that off. It's like the symbolism. Once you see the symbolism, like you see a a symbol for uh, P-E-D-O stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't unsee that. It's all over the Catholic Church, the priest robes and everything all over it. I'm sure. I mean, a part of me does want to go back into the church that I grew up in just to just inspect the uh, sanctuary, because I know I can I know there are some symbols in there that I know that I remember. Yeah. Oh, that's what that is. But I want to go look more because I'm like, there has to be more there because none of them are clean. None of them are clean. Um, even seminary schools. If you, I did this whole breakdown with the Nephilim. Like I looked into seminary schools and they all, if you follow the money <coughs> to the very top, it's all owned by the same people who are funding yep. everything else that's wrong with the world right now. The, the, the church is just a part of this machine, this um, yeah. mind control, um, satanic. I'll call the church what it is. It's satanic. Yeah. It's not, it's not of the light. It's of the darkness. I'm um, very blunt about this kind of stuff now because people just need to wake up and just see it. And yeah. I'm not going to tippy toe around fundamentalists. I'm not going to tippy toe around people who are not seeing it because it's going to come out soon. I'm very confident it's going to come out soon. And um, I'm so many people tippy toe around that. I'm, I'm over that. So yeah, it's Call time. It for what Buck it up. is. It's satanic. Buck up cowgirl. It's time. Like you got, yeah. we got to, we need forward. to, you, you know, you and Catherine talked about triggers yesterday on your uh, video. I think it was you and her. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we need to take responsibility for our triggers. And if you're triggered by what we're saying, then you need to do some inner work. Yeah. It's not, it's, if you're triggered by what we're saying, it's not our problem. It's your I've problem. Had tri- yep. And I've had triggers. My husband knows I have triggers because uh, it's a, uh, it's a PTSD um, mm-hmm. mechanism that happens. But the thing is my husband's not responsible for those triggers. He wasn't the one who caused them. So I've had to really take a step back and I've had to really do some, inner work on myself because you know if he said like there's certain words or there's certain smells or there's certain things that would just like remind me of you know a past um somebody that caused a b u s c in my life so i would i had to work through that and it's not my husband's responsibility to sit there and try to change what he says. Yeah. To walk around eggshells for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's like, I know. So, I, I, 
<coughs> your triggers can be, even though triggers are really, really hard. Sorry, guys, I'm sitting on a stool <coughs> right now, and so my butt's getting a little uncomfortable. That's okay. And I'm coughing <laughs> away over here, and my dogs are click, click, click with their nails on the floor. <laughs> um, we uh, no triggers can be if you know how to if you know how to process triggers properly. They're actually a gift. Because it's God's way of showing you where there's there's work to be done, where there's healing that needs to happen. And God wants us to heal. God doesn't want us to be in this place of perpetual trauma, a perpetual fear. He, he tells us, even in the canonized Bible that's been edited, he says 365 times, do not fear. You have nothing to fear. You know, it's, you were talking about like not questioning things in scripture. And it's funny, like in the church, I was thinking about even in the canonized Bible, there's references to reincarnation. Even in the canonized Bible, we see it a lot in the missing books of the Bible where Jesus very much taught this, this idea of your soul never dies, really. You must be born again. You must be born again. Right? Right. But, but what does that know, mean? <laughs> what would happen if you were to raise your hand and ask about reincarnation in church and you were to show in the Bible where they make references to this? what would happen? You get kicked well, out. Probably you say, panic. okay, well, you need to recite the sinner's prayer is what it is. And I'm going to go in the Bible and I'm going to show you there's no, no such thing as a sinner's prayer in there. No, there's the, there's the, our father prayer, which is by the way, butchered. If you want the real version of that, that's in the gospel of the Holy 12. Mm -hmm. um, father, mother, God. Yeah. <laughs> so i mean if you were to raise your hand and, and question that to a pastor and they're going to say well you need it's a sinner's prayer and i'm going to go back in the canonized bible and i'm going to say well i don't see this in here jesus doesn't say this no. so um you prove it to me and then i'm going to prove to you that there's reincarnation and i guarantee you that pastor is, is still going to be like talking to a brick wall they're yeah. still not gonna i mean you it's ask not gonna click you ask a pastor why, why, why did they um, get rid of all these books of the Bible? They'll tell you, oh, because it wasn't the word of God. How do you know that? They'll be, oh, because they don't even know. No, dude, go no. back and research the Council of Nicaea. It's were you purpose. there? Did you yeah. were you friends with Constantine uh, a couple thousand years ago? Were you friends with him? Did you sit in the Council of Nicaea? Or how about this? Have you actually sat and read one of these books? Because I have, and wow, do they bring light or what? They, yeah, they bring they tell you the truth. And truth and you read through these books and you go oh i see why these were banned it was to protect them not us yeah it was protect yeah. them well it's funny you say were you with constantine tamara told me that one of my and i believe her um we had just done charlie ward show and she called me and my we love tamara she's i love her she uh she called me and she was like talking about how i just know all this stuff and i was like you know, I, I research a lot because I'm fascinated, but I feel like I'm pulling from some past life stuff. I feel like it's clicking because of, of memory. Same. And yeah. she said, she said, she said that I, she thinks that one of my lives, I was young and I was body type. Like I am now very, um, slim and fat. I can move fast. And I watched them get rid of these books. I saw it happen and they started hunting me and I had to run anyway. So she goes, this is why I think you're so passionate of about this situation is because you actually were there and saw what happened. Yeah. Um, it's like the Ethiopian church. I just did a, uh, when I was with Aquarius Rising Africa um, on Monday, we talked about um, the literal fountain of youth, not the internal one, but the, like I talked with John Claude about, but the out, the, 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 the legend, the folklore. And we talked about the letter of Prester John. And I guys, that, that was a fun episode to do. And they talked about uh, the Ethiopian church and how, in the 1630s, uh, Ethiopia backed away from its alliance with um, Europe. And at that point, and we know the Ethiopian church has kept a lot of these books that the, other, that the Roman Catholic church banned. At that point, the Roman Catholic church called the Ethiopian church heretical because they pulled away. So it had absolutely, excuse my language, but fuck all to do with God and everything to do with political power. And the Ethiopian Bible is the, if you take any of the Bibles that we know of today, the Ethiopian Bible is actually the most accurate one. Um, they still have like, we have six, between 60 and 66 books in our canonized Bible. They have about 88. Yeah. They have way more. They have Enoch. They have Jubilees. They have the book of wisdom. Mm -hmm. they, they have pretty much the whole apocrypha in there, which is all of the heretic old Testament, uh, and scriptures. there's a, the apocrypha of John and people, yeah. people hear you say the apocrypha and they're like, oh, those are the bad books. I'm like, do you know what apocrypha means? Apocrypha means secret teaching. It means a secret teaching. So it means that one of these disciples or his students had a 
a secret lesson with Jesus and they went and wrote us wrote about it. And that was the apocryphon because it was a secret, but they didn't keep it a secret. They wrote about it for the world to see. And we see reference to this in the book of Mark because Mark talks about that, that there are lessons Jesus gives the groups and that there are lessons that Jesus gives people individually as people. Mm -hmm. So we see that reference in the, it's it, the mental gymnastics people have to do to argue that these books is heretical is kind of funny. Because yes. the proof is overwhelming that they're not, that they're not. Then the reason why they were taken out was, was for nefarious purposes, not for ben benevolent purposes, but for malevolent purposes, for evil yeah. to, to, to trick us. Um, and so, and so I'm just, I think Stephanie, I think, especially as we cross over and we're in this process of transitioning, you know, we, we technically went to the age of Aquarius about a year ago, um, winter solstice 2020, but we know that it takes a couple of years for the transition to fully come about. But I do think Stephanie, that God puts you in a very unique position to be able to experience this so that you can help other people, um, when the truth comes out, help them, um, yeah, just like you said, not necessarily be able to give them the answers because we have to be able to give, have the answers within ourselves. We have to, we, we're at this point where we have to learn how to research for ourselves. We're so used to people telling us the answer and that's what got us into this mess in the first place. Like we have to be able, but to be able to offer a support group for people for felt for true fellowship, not yeah. control, not a, having leader control everyone, but for true fellowship where we can talk about it. And I've sat through one of the groups already and it was fantastic. Um, beautiful, beautiful people are in these groups. And so sometimes if I'm available, I will pop into, um, to these groups with Stephanie and listen to you guys and talk with you guys. Um, it's amazing. And Stephanie, you said you're, you have a waiting list now for the de deprogramming group, correct? Yeah. So what's going to happen is I have two deprogramming groups on Sunday and I'm going to have to split them into two, um, groups and I'll lead I'll lead um, one, uh, one of the 12 o'clock and one of the 8 o'clock Eastern Standard, Standard Time groups. I have um, somebody um, who is going to take over one of the 6 o'clock, the other half of the 6 I mean, the, sorry, the 8 o'clock group on Sundays. Abby, stop yelling at me. My dog is yelling at me. She got to go out, but she can wait two seconds because when I brought her out, she just stood there and sniffed the air. <laughs> Catherine Edwards, I need your help with this one. <laughs> <laughs> she's got behavioral issues <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry I had to interject with a joke in there <laughs> but um I found the group to be way too large and um I'm there was a lot of like background noise and everything so I had a hard time um really focusing um so I'm gonna have to split those in half which I'm gonna email all those people but um in the meantime so I think the deprogramming group from what I'm looking at is going to be anywhere between I, I'm looking at six weeks at a time. And then every six weeks, I will offer uh, four more time slots for that group once that group is done. Um, but as far as the women and men's group goes, those are kind of like an unlimited thing. Come and go as you want. If you can't make one week, that's fine. If you need to join in because you had a rough week, come on in kind of a thing. It's kind of like a more free flow thing, more talking, crying, laughing, fellowship kind of a thing where the deprogramming group, I'm going to be sending um, videos to people that will kind of get the, the wheels turning in the brain to kind of start thinking outside the box. And then we can uh, reconvene and talk about it in the group and everything. It's, it's more of like a learning center type of, I don't like to say school, but like a learning center type of thing. I have someone who, which you met too, we, from the group, was it the group the other night we had? Um, Krista. Yeah. I don't want to name her last name, but <clears throat> she definitely had a lot of good ideas. So yeah. I'm probably going to run with those ideas as well because I, I thought they were brilliant. Because I, you know, I'm new at this too. I've never run groups before. Like I said, this is divinely inspired. This was, an, I'm not even taking credit for this because I've come to the point in my life where I hear God's voice very strongly. And one day I heard him say, you need to make groups for people. This is a real issue. And people are not going to like this, but I felt, I, I heard God say, you're going to help bring the church down. Oh, I would take that as an honor. I have it as a major badge of honor, big giant hypothetical trophy. Um, 
Yeah, it's I'm glad to do it right now. People are going to be mad that I'm saying this, but the church is satanic. There's no two ways about it. It's satanic. Oh, Cyrus's penis is going down. Mm -hmm. All those steeples. So I think that's one of my biggest missions besides the whole light working, helping people after disclosure comes out. Um, But, you know, eventually I'm probably going to even make a group for pastors. Yeah. Where they can get deep yeah, you know, there are some good pastors out there that are going to have like the biggest mental breakdowns of their life mental breakdowns and they realize everything they've been teaching yeah. is satanic yeah yeah so i i like i feel like in past lives i i was considered uh probably i have i i would almost call deja vu or kind of like vague memories of probably like being like a medicine person where i made herbal medicine or i did things that would make me considered a a witch. Right. And so, um, I think in this lifetime, God has specifically planted me in the church so that I could see the corruption so that I can go through stuff myself. I was attached to it. Witches are there's, there's dark witches and there's light witches. No, I was about to say too, we've been joking on text guys because I got, I for sure got called a witch and I'm like, you know what? (coughs) I'll wear that with uh, that badge with honor because there's so many women that have come before us that have been burned at the stake hung because of them just using herbs. And so I'll wear that badge because those are, those were God's children too. And Stephanie, I was joking. I was like, we need to make a t-shirt that says witches for Christ. Wouldn't that blow the church away? (laughs) If you had a t-shirt, I'll wear that. And then I'll put my witch's hat on and then I'll walk in a Catholic church. Stroke my on your bumper sticker on your car or something. <laughs> I would love. I would. I would. I would take my popcorn into a church just to see. Just to see that happen because, yeah, you know, there are there are what light workers and dark black black magic workers and a lot of the church is black magic. It's a, a lot of it mm-hmm. is dark, 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 dark stuff. So, yeah. um, so yeah, yeah. And I'm right behind you. I mean, I, and I, I say too. You know, we talked about earlier walking on eggshells at the church and. You know, you, Janine, like all these people that I feel like I am tomorrow that I'm friends with now that I've done these shows with that I have a relationship with now. I don't feel like I have to walk on eggshells around any of you. And we're all spiritual and grounded in our own right. And so you, there's this freedom there where you, you don't have to walk. We all actually, house. we all actually connect telepathically with God too. Yeah. And together. It's, it's a I mean, telepathic it's a communication. Experience. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. I've, and, and with each other too. I've had some wild experiences these last few months with that kind of stuff happening where it's oh, like, yeah. since shivers down my spine sometimes because it's just so wild that, yeah. And all and guys, before we uh, give the two names of the people who won the, uh, the, the jewelry giveaway from uh, Stephanie's store, I'm going to leave with one of my favorite quotes, this conversation. And I hope people think about this. My favorite quotes of all time. A religious person is a person who has never seen hell. A spiritual person is a person who's been to hell and back again. Which one was Jesus? He went to hell and back again. So I'd rather be in the spiritual boat than the religious boat any day. So, all right, guys. So I'm going to put a link to Stephanie's store uh, store down in the description box below. But I'm going to go ahead and name off the two winners from this drawing. I had to do it off camera because I'm a little bit Got some space issues here right now where I am in Florida. But um, I'm going to put both this video both on Rumble and on YouTube. So in case whoever is uh, watching this, you hear your name, you'll have both both platforms to find your name. And are we, we're going to do another one, right, Stephanie? And a- yeah, I'm going to do another one probably in two weeks. Okay, cool. So the winners for this last round were Pamela Spa. So Pamela Spa, that's your username. Um, and another Kate Crusader. Another caped crusader. So Pamela Spa and another caped crusader are the two people who won jewelry from Stephanie's Etsy store. So again, I'm going to put a link to her Etsy store down in the description box below. And Stephanie, will you just send me the appropriate email for your Etsy store for them to email you and contact you? Yes. And I actually think, so the way I'm going to work it is, um, so for whoever won, they get to choose whatever set of earrings they want. Um, I, I had to limit it to the earrings just because of the cost of materials for right now. Um, so whatever pair of earrings you want, it's your choice. Um, I believe there's a spot on the Etsy to let me know um, if that's you. But also, I probably need an email too. 
So um, I will give you the email and you guys can email me and uh, let me know. As far as everyone else goes from now, I started this last week, but from now until Christmas, there is a 10% off coupon when you go to checkout and you just put a code in and it's all uppercase lettering and it's great awakening. One word. I'll put that in the description box as well, guys. For and that. if you are wanting to get your loved ones a Christmas gift and they are into jewelry and such, um, number one, I have a bunch of new stuff going on my Etsy account. I actually made 23 pairs of um, earrings as of right now. By the time this goes up, I'll probably have like another 20 pairs of earrings up. And awesome. I have holiday ones. So I'll just, this is just one of the... Oh, fun. A big shout out to Kristen B, by the way. Um, I got this. The, I don't even know if I'm. it's okay for me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. I'm not putting her last name out there. Um, she's one of our soul sisters out there. I want a big shout out to her. I got a package full of beads yesterday. I was crying because I needed to make more jewelry and Many people know I'm in a bind right now because I'm trying to earn money creatively because I can't get a certain something. So I can't go back to my job, what I was doing. So money is a little tight right now. And when I got that, I said, oh, my God. Like, and it was so weird because I went into Michael's the other day. I wanted to get a bunch of beads. I didn't get anything because I felt like somehow that was going to be provided and I didn't know how and I just kind of left the store and I'm like well I could have gotten maybe one thing but then I can't make a lot of jewelry I, I can only make so much with that so it's so weird when I opened the box and found everything in there it's like God told her exactly what I looked at even down to the the pendants the silver pendants there's little palm trees in there there was little leaf pendants in there and it was all the same ones that I wanted at the store and even the colors of all the, the the beads it was as if God said get this one this one this one this one and it's like it blew my mind and I'm still like in shock from it because it, like that was the sweetest thing somebody's like done for me that she's was like awesome too some, yeah she's one she's of been a big supporter as well yeah yeah she that's sends me guys like even though stephanie and I are the ones of the platform we're just normal people just like all of you guys watching watch normal people and we're where we go when we go all we're all just walking each other home and this is the this is the world you know janine talks about this a lot like creating the world we're going to be walking into and <coughs> what she did is literally the world that we're walking into where we're, we are each other we're not each other's keeper we're each other's family and that's yeah. super important so that's amazing that's amazing um, so yeah, and Stephanie's so talented. Your, your jewelry is so, so beautiful. And, and this is Thanks. a thing too, you know, what, what do they say when you buy from a small business, not only are you buying from that business, but you're helping like kids get their dance lessons and get their, what they need. You're not paying for a corporation to have more multimillion dollars for whatever. It's, it's literally us helping each other out. So I would super, it's super helping help. me right now, just straight out with regular bills, like car payments and electric bill and stuff like that. Cause you know, right now it's, it's, it's very tight and I don't have fear right now because I know what's happening. I know, you know, we're coming into this, uh, Nisera Jacera thing, but we don't know when that's going to happen. In the meantime, I still have to keep one foot in the matrix world and still right, be able right. to pay bills, but it's like hard when you're refusing to go along with, uh, the, uh, yeah. the dates of man, we'll put it yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah. And, um, cause I don't want to say that word on YouTube. And, you know, because of that, I, I come from the medical world. I, 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 I will not do that. I will not do what they're asking of me. And I left that world uh, very, very ill. And now that I'm healthy, I can't go back. Yeah. So whatever contribution I get helps. Um, and like even right now, in order to divide my time with the groups, um, I do have uh, a PayPal and a Venmo set up for any donations and it's, it's a free group, but the donations do help me out so that I can spread my time more into doing I'll so. Put, and so I'll put, I'll put Stephanie's PayPal and Venmo in the description box as well, guys, in case you want to donate, it is much appreciated. I, I think, um, I think a lot of our subscribers get it, but I know it's hard when you, it takes a lot to run these channels. It takes a lot. And to, I, it's a full-time job. I hate, asking for money. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. And these groups 
is not a money making machine. It's not supposed to be. I don't think it ever will be. And I'm okay with that because I'd rather help somebody than, than become rich. So it's like, I don't want people to get the wrong idea, but if you can't, if you can't don't, if you're in a situation where like, you're like Stephanie, like you can't donate, that's fine. Totally fine. But if you feel like you want to fight you $5, you know, it's, it's like, you know, whatever you, that, yeah. And I'll put that down in the description box as well for you. Cause we're still waiting. You're at the number to be monetized on YouTube. You're just waiting for hours watched, right. To get that. It's either that or I'm just not linking uh, things. They make correctly. it very difficult for you to get that AdSense. Um, but yeah, it helps. It does help. <coughs> the thing about the AdSense, that's the one thing about YouTube that I really appreciate is that they give the creators that option to make money off of their work. And it doesn't cost this, the viewer anything, cause it's just the commercials. Um, and then that does help because this is uh, all the stuff I know that I have to research. It takes me hours and not days just to put, what, put together one 20 minute video. You yes. know, so it's a lot of work, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And so, um, and so we're grateful all for all of that. And um, so, yeah, I'll put all, all that information down in the description box below of both YouTube and Rumble, because this is going to be uploaded to both my platforms. And um, so, Stephanie, next time you want to dig into the Left Behind series? Yeah, we can do that. That sounds like fun. Pull some dirt in those people. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's my mission. I'm on a mission, guys. I'm on a mission from God. Out of all things, bring down that church. Bring it down, baby. <laughs> Let's just bring it down with everything else. Just drain drain the SWAMP. I don't even know if we can say that phrase, but I'm going to say the SWAMP. Drain the church. Drain it down. Yes. All right, Stephanie. Well, I hope you guys are having a restful weekend. Um, Christmas season is upon us, so please check out Stephanie's store. And that, that discount code will be down in the uh, description box as well. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.